Welcome back to another vlog, ladies and gents. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. What we're gonna talk about today is what washed out so many people on the last test. So we're gonna go over proper form, what to do, what not to do, and how to get through this PT portion of this whole hiring process. So let's go. Sergeant Jamal Owens is gonna be the one that you're probably gonna end up running into when you come out here to do your PT assessment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the things for the PT assessment and what they're actually looking for. So when these guys come out and they're actually getting ready to do this test, what do they have to do? What, what's the, the criteria that you guys are looking for? Well, the criteria stands now, it's on the TPD Hire webpage, but it's Cooper Standard. Um, standards that we go by. So it's sit up to push up in a mile and a half and it's broken down by age group. So 21 to 29, then it drops from 30 to 39 and we top out at 40 for people who apply. So those numbers on the TBD Hire, TBD Hire website, so you go check it out. All right, and I'll also post those up here so where you guys can kind of see. And what we're gonna do, the idea is just to be able to give you guys a firm understanding. There was a lot of people that washed out on the last one. What we wanna to try to do is give you a cheat sheet, if you will. So at this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to run through a couple of different sequences for you, let you see the proper way and uh, maybe not so proper way. All right, so without further ado, let's get to it. Let's get it. All right, Jamal, so what happens here? What do we do? Well, how we start out, we start out in the classroom, okay? We give them the rundown, the etiquette of what we need to do to get started, but we show the actual video. So if you go to tpdhire.com, you'll see the YouTube video of what exactly we're gonna be doing. Then we're gonna come in, in here, the DT room, and we're gonna physically show you ourselves of what we do. The sit up, the push up, then we go outside for the mile and a half run. So right now we're gonna demonstrate and have Officer Winger, and one of my great staff here at the academy, show you how to do the sit up first. After they come from the classroom, we'll explain to them how to actually do the sit up. Um, in the holder, the holding position, you either have them hold the bottom of your feet or your ankles, that is all your personal preference. Again, we talk about fingers interlaced. At any time you're going up or down in that sit up, if your fingers come apart, that rep does not count. Here's good. Ooh, that's close, but they're still interlaced. Here is the preferred area. Behind your head, straight behind your head. It starts coming up, that rep does not count. And you can see right here the nook of your neck. I'm gonna go down, fingers interlaced. When we say so, we'll say exercise. What we're looking for is if you come all the way up. Either elbows touching the knee or going past the knee. That's a good rep. Fingers staying interlaced. And back down. Shoulder blades touching the ground. Okay? So that is a good rep. That is a good rep. Okay? One thing we don't want to see is hip thrusting. If you got a hip thrust to come up, that rep will not count. If at any time you stay down too long for 1,001 or a breath, the exercise is done and you're at the number that you're on. So if you need to rest, we're resting in the up position. If you come down, if you're doing like a wiggle worm to get up, that rep does not count. You have to rest, rest in the upright position. Fingers stay interlaced. Okay, so down, up. That is a good rep. Anything else will not count. Now, what about the incorrect way and what we've seen in the past? Do you understand the exercise? Yes. Keep your fingers interlaced, go all the way up, and all the way back down. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, hold it ready. Ready. First on the down, ready? Ready. Exercise. All the way down. The rep did not count. All the way down. Good. All the way up, fingers. Rep does not count, all the way up. Fingers, all the way up, all the way up. 
wiggle worm. Does not count. Does not count. Still does not count. All the way up. All the way up. Don't rest down too long. Does not count. Still does not count. Full reps. Still does not count. I need you all the way up, all the way down. So in all seriousness, that is one of the methods that we do see out here at the academy when people are performing their sit-ups uh, in this capacity. Don't do that. All right, so on the push-up, this will be your start position. We're going to ask if everybody's ready. The exerciser is going to respond, say that they're ready. Ready, sir. We're going to say ready, up, and exercise. At that time, you're going to start knocking out good reps of push-ups. A good rep is exactly like Sergeant Owens is doing right now. As he gets into the down position, we're looking at the triceps and shoulders are parallel to the floor. As he comes to the up position, his elbows should be locked, at least a soft lock. It doesn't have to be a super hard lock, but half push-ups, like the bodybuilder type push-ups we see a lot of times from guys that pump a lot of iron and think they're really cool. This is what they do. That will not count. You can do a million of those and they still won't count. The other thing we see a lot is the worm. You start to get tired, you do the worm. This, that will not count. A proper push-up maintains a strict plank, plank form during the entire course of the exercise. This form needs to be maintained. If at any time during the exercise, you pike your rear end into the air in a resting position like this, or you sag in the middle in a resting position like that, the exercise is terminated and whatever number you're at will be your final number. If you need to rest during the exercise, the only acceptable resting position is the upright position and a full plank. Body has to be uh, straight and locked out. Uh, if you become tired and you decide to shake out your arms at any time, the exercise will be terminated and whatever number you're at will be your final number. You cannot lift your feet up off the ground either to shake out your legs. Same deal, terminate the exercise. If you start to bob your head down during your repetitions, so your head's like that, that will not count. Don't do it. What not to do. Don't do it. Don't do it. Everybody in the down position ready. Great. Up and exercise. Zero. 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 Still zero, zero, hiking, flatten your back, zero, you're sagging in the middle, zero, and zero, still zero, and you're not coming all the way up, zero, still zero. Okay, so congratulations, you passed the sit-up, you passed the push-up. What's next? Just a mile and a half run. Again, check out tpdhire.com, look at your age, and look what you need to get to enter, but also look what you need to get to exit. Start preparing now, okay, before you come see me. All right, so you can pass, get that badge, and hold your bank. So, what's up? Mile and a half, let's go. There are several crucial things that we touch on is you can't touch anybody, you can't assist them, pull them along, or you and that person is disqualified. Secondly, you can't step off the track, whether inside of the shack or outside out here. If you step off the track, you're done. Run smart. Running and running as hard as you can at the first lap, you may burn yourself out. You know your conditioning better than, better than we do. So run smart, know what you can, yeah, run smart. <laughs> Run smart.
ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you found this video useful and we will see you guys and I wish you the best of luck. See you at the standards test. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh wait, Paul.